though of the get-go, I have to say that this place, Newfoundland, reminds me so much of Iceland. There's a lot of nature where, you know, people love to hike, nature trails. And it's funny, our tour guide was saying that the people who can't really afford to come to Iceland, go to Iceland, this is where they come. Well, go figure. Okay, so I'm finally here. This is Cape Spear, and Cape Spear is the northernmost part of North America. <laughs> so nice. So I am such an idiot. <laughs> here I go bragging about the northernmost part of, of, of North America. I meant easterly, oh. most easterly part of North America. Well, at least I can say I've been where it's the northernmost. Now it's the most uh, easterly. Now we have to find the southernest tip and something that is just the westernmost. Hmm. <laughs> That's the Basilica of St. John the Baptist. It was really beautiful inside. We came right at 3.59 and they closed at 4. You know, every time we travel these days since my brother passed away, we always try to look for signs. And sometimes it really just is all about your faith. And uh, so far, our first day in Newfoundland has been quite memorable.
This is it. Wow. Oh, sorry. Are they not supposed to be on top of That's one another? Crazy. That's crazy. They'll crawl off each other if they don't want to be there. This is a giant sea cucumber. That is huge. It is. That would be worth Do you a lot want to money. hold it? Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah. So cold, right? Hey, back in the water where you so the nice thing about this place is, you know, it's it's very interactive. You can really get to touch the different species and uh, gives you, a, again, a very educational way of how precious life is in all forms, whether it be in land, air, or in this case, in water. All this time I thought she was going to feed them fish, but she's actually feeding them ice as water. Even that's pretty cool. It is. Cool. Because it she's is. feeding them several times, so we didn't get this much fish. Hi, Steve. Hi. <laughs> so the three of them, they're seals that were basically rescued. So there's Babette, Tyler, and Dini. And they're so cute, and I asked how come they're separated. I know they can actually get out of the pool and join the other. So this one over here seems to be always antisocial. That's the youngest. They're so cute. Lobster from oh. Crazy. <laughs> Own Shapes Landing, and yeah. all the fish that we had just eaten were literally just fresh this morning, correct? Yep, yeah, that's right. Crazy, and that is the tongue. That's a big tongue. That's a big tongue. Thank you so much for having us and showing us how fresh the fish is. You are you here for holidays, are you? I'm sorry, a holiday. Are you? Yes, I we're am. here for four days. Okay. Where are you from? Uh, Philippines. Oh, okay. Tell me how to freeze today. You come here to get cold. Yes, oh, yeah. I know. Everyone's like wearing shorts and I'm wearing this. Your winter coat. Right? No, but really, it's been so interesting to see this. So thank you so much. Yeah. Steve, thank you so much for taking oh us here. Oh my god. Oh my god, so that was so interesting. So we had just, uh, after meeting the owner of Shapes Land, and my mom had asked him, what do you do with the skin of the cod? And he's like, oh, we just throw it. And it's like, no, do you know, I think that's a great thing about living in third world countries. You, they are so industrious, or they find ways to utilize every body part of every animal. Um, so it's not to waste, it's a potential income. And so she had told them that you just fried like chicken skin, you know, like pork rinds or chicharron, and it's a great beer food that you can have with your ice iceberg beer. And he actually said that he was gonna give it a try because they actually thought it was so strange. But um, hey, that's one more thing to do with a part of the cod.
Monaco Beach is not really a beach for swimming, um, but they do um, have the superstition that if you find this lucky rock, it's basically a white rock or any colored rock that has a ring around it. And if you find one, it's good luck. So a lot of people have bonfires here. You can see like friends like hanging out. And uh, hmm, I wonder if I can find one. Is this counted? I'm not really sure. Look at here. Here's one. I'm gonna take this home, this tiny one. Small one, yeah. Yeah. For luck. For more travels. And for eating all the vacation food and never getting fat. <laughs> I'm all for it. <laughs> okay. I found a found another one. There's actually quite a lot of them. <laughs> so I don't know if uh, I'm just lucky or there's just plenty. Man, so after that lunch, if you guys have noticed, I, my voice sounds so really sleepy because that heavy meal from Shades Landing is oh, just that carby sleep that you want so bad. <laughs> With this really cool weather, you just want to stay in your hotel room and just pass out. <laughs> On this spot, His Holiness Pope John Paul II knelt and prayed September 12, 1984. My mom usually doesn't like stairs anymore, but you, anytime there's something religious, she has all this energy. <laughs> So we've been driving for almost two hours to get to these stables right here. <laughs> so we are going to see the Newfa Newfoundland ponies, which is basically a hybrid of... You know, you don't see a lot of people are not aware. It's a hybrid of a Shetland pony and a regular horse. Sure about your golf. Oh, okay. okay. No, this one's last year, is it? This is, yeah, she was, she's only a year old. This one. But That's she's grown. Big. Her dad was a bit bigger, right? Okay. <laughs> yeah, so she's. Uh, oh, man, is she beautiful? Yeah, uh -huh. she's gorgeous. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, you got any more out the way? <laughs> no, I don't think Is he scratching? A white star. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, mostly they're bay. The most common is bay. Oh, her name is Balmont. Sorry. Balmont, like the brand. Balmont. Balmont. Oh, I thought it was like Balmont. You know, oh, sorry, no, no, it was no. like that luxury no, designer. No, it's actually. Sorry. I had two foals <laughs> last year. Here we are. And the thing was, it was we call one Balmont and the other one Hamel. Balmont. Balmont Hamel, right? Because I remember I was telling you about that. That's another brand of our heritage, pretty much, right? Uh, so it. this is Liz here, and she Hi. takes care of all the ponies, and uh, she's nice enough to let me in. <laughs> And uh, our tour guide Francis is even so kind as to bring us all the way here. So this is a great way to show you guys that this breed is dying. And if we don't take care of them, there's not, not going to be any of them left. Right? Right? Oh. <laughs> I gotta get a close up. 
she's she's trying to show you. Look at this face. It's a thing of beauty. You want us to go away? Yeah. I can't handle rejection. So this one knows about the camera. Oh yeah, she likes. It's not shy about the selfie. First time saw a selfie yeah. stick. Woo! Yeah. Not used to selfies, but not used to Bye, she's just standing there. She's like, don't go. I know. I know. Bye, darling. Bye, take care. How could I think that the name of the other horse was Balmont? Um. <laughs> it's Balmont. That was very nice. Of course, we made like a little donation. Because you know these love these people it's they just do it out of the goodness of their oh. heart just trying to care for animals or a piece of land or a piece of history in the town so nice oh okay I got uh, you can divide between you there's a bookmark there's some oh, uh, postcards this is and Beaumont. this is actually the baby oh. last year the little this red one Hamel. yeah I saw him when he was yeah. So right after the ponies, we're here in Capahaden and there is a famous grotto here and actually the church is being uh, restored and what makes this um, quite historical is because this is where they actually said the very first mass in North America. Isn't that amazing? The very first mass. So there's the Stations of the Cross. There's Our Lady of Lourdes, and there is even a little stone in which uh, that comes from uh, the Blessed Lady that stood at Lourdes. So, very nice, even just to pass, pass by, just quick to say a prayer and just see how beautiful this place is. first colony and originally the English capital of Newfoundland. here called colonial cook up and what that is we're taking eight 17 century recipes and working on it for eight weeks it takes a whole week to master one recipe okay so I'm learning from the tour today that cod is king which I've been learning for the past few days so there's gold there's silk there's spices but here in Newfoundland did I say that right Newfoundland, Newfoundland it's cod which these ladies had <laughs> just cooked with like a billion ingredients that I, I don't know about but the important fish is the cod so let's give it a try. Oops. Mm. Wow, that's <laughs> high five, girl. <Rafa. laughs> Do they high five too in the 17th oh, yeah. century? Oh, totally. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, it's it's really really good. So this is like a you're just basically showing the way how they used to do it back then, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. With a camera as well. Yeah. <laughs> With a camera as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then we learned earlier that this is not just for utensils, but um, back in the day I learned from Francis, you can test me, that hygiene was not the most important thing. So I can drink from it here, and then I pass it to somebody, and then he'll drink, drink it as well, and then pass it on, so forth and so forth, and you have a saliva party! <laughs> okay, and then can you explain this again? So this is basically the puzzle mug. The puzzle jug. A puzzle jug. Filled with wine or ale. Yes. And an entertainment piece. Yes. You can drink from it, but cannot pour. So obviously it has all these holes here. So the question is, how are you going to get to drink from it without anything spilling over? And the answer is... 
Do you remember? So you drink from here from a stout, it's a built-in straw. So this is all hollow. It's a hollow hidden chamber, so you drink from here. So you suck from it. Yeah. So it, it doesn't really pass here, electric. but it passes through the handle. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's like a little hole underneath the handle. And there's yeah. one more piece. There's, there's a little hole. You gotta cover that, otherwise you oh, don't have that's a vacuum. Right. You'll have a vacuum. Over here. here. So yeah, that, that okay. allows you to drink. Awesome. Just don't drink when you're drunk. Mm. Okay. <laughs>
since of course, you know, one of the tours that they offer here is uh, seeing the icebergs. One of the things that they offer here is iceberg beer and iceberg water. I've had iceberg water. It's water. But now, I'm gonna try iceberg beer, and this time we're bar hopping onto O'Reilly's Pub. And the main reason why is because my sister wants to try flipper seal pie. <laughs> the vegetables whatnot you know drink is also a popular thing that you have to try it in certain countries so here in Newfoundland it's iceberg beer water or vodka this is actually the most popular alcoholic beverage in Newfoundland now iceberg water is the purest form of water that you guys can actually drink or I guess experience why because when it falls down as rain it's actually so pure because it's never touched soil or land so when the iceberg travels here, which takes about a long time from Greenland here to Newfoundland. I guess the people who, I don't want to say harvest, but yes, when they harvest the iceberg water, they drain out the salt in it and they package into water, vodka, or beer. So I just had to give it a try. So cheers! Okay, it says 4.5% alcohol. It's actually so mild for someone who doesn't drink or drink beer for that matter. I've always thought that beer tastes like bitter water, but this is actually really good. It has a very mild sweetness to it, and even if it's really cold right now, and this is cold beer, really refreshing. Cheers! Do you hear that? Do you hear the water? I love the sound of running water. So apparently they found a large amount of fossils here in the rocks where I'm standing right now. I actually wish I could find some of them. But this is uh, actually why this, this river is quite significant. But for me, whether or not there's fossils, I mean, Having, I wish we had these just out of the city in Manila. It's just so beautiful, so relaxing. I could do this all day. But we have to go, <laughs> so let's go. Well, he aided Captain Perry and they reached just a few steps away from the North Pole. And this home actually is a heritage home. And here you can get to know about like how distinguished he is, all these gentlemen in here. Look at this, this is Theodore Roosevelt. Now I think the thing that resonated with me the most is um, he's here from Newfoundland, but he couldn't really get funding um, for his expedition. So he moved to New York and the US had funded his expeditions. He is the guy responsible for bringing a lot of the stuff that we see in the Smithsonian Museum. Okay, now speaking of bringing in, take a look at this polar bear. Insane, it is so big. It must have been from the North Pole. I'm kidding. <laughs> Their back 
backyard and I was learning upstairs in the room that when Bartlow would come from his expeditions, you know, from the Arctic and from the North Pole and all these things, he would bring all these animals with him. And where would he put all these animals? I'm sure it's not, not just from the Arctic, but basically a lot of animals. And before he would take them to the U.S., this would be like a stopover and so all the neighbors would be so fascinated because they can get to pet all these different animals and it became a mini zoo and eventually when he went to the U.S. he had donated them to American zoos. Pretty interesting. Obviously, we know what's my favorite section of the museum. <laughs> Just like <laughs> so after kissing the cod, you wash it down. Hold on, hold on to your drink till everybody is served, okay?